China has ambitions to be a global technology leader in two key areas – artificial intelligence and renewable energy. In April 2023, China's solar power output reached 430 gigawatts, making it the largest producer of solar energy in the world. It is on track to have more than double the solar and wind capacity of Europe by 2025. China also aims to be the world leader in AI by 2030, with an industry worth 150 billion US dollars. But behind all the ambitious talk, where does China's AI and clean energy industry really stand? Today, Beijing is one of 10 cities in China where Baidu's driverless ride-hailing service Apollo Go operates. And Baidu has been steadily expanding the fleet since its debut in 2022. China has a large economy of scale. The user case for AI technology is massive. By 2040, China is expected to operate 12 million autonomous vehicles, which is double that of the US. Baidu's robo-taxi is an example of how China is all in on AI. Since 2015, legislation permits and infrastructure support has expanded China's autonomous vehicle industry. It's become part of the country's push for AI advancement to rival the US. At the moment, though, China lags behind the US in terms of AI advancement. So when OpenAI introduced ChatGDP last October, Actually, the Chinese were caught by surprise, a lot, actually. The Chinese didn't really anticipate OpenAI was able to introduce such a powerful new tool in such a short manner. Chinese tech firms launched their versions of generative chatbots one after another in 2023 after getting the green light from the government. Baidu's Ernie Bot user base has since reached 70 million not far behind ChatGPT's 100 million weekly active users worldwide. The OpenAI people have a head start on this whole learning process. As you know, it's all learned by algorithms, right? The learning process is a multiplicative process. And so once you have a head start, it's very difficult for the latecomers to ca catch up with you. So there's already a gap in between the technology level that is being offered by OpenAI and the Chinese Equivalent. And there is one more advantage that ChatGPT has over its Chinese competitors. One major constraint is the lack of data. Most of the global websites are written in English. Only about 1.5% of the global websites are written in Chinese. So that has created this dilemma for the local companies. If they train their AI model with English, then there's very little user case in the Chinese contest. For Chinese internet users, they usually generate content or interact with the internet through super app on their phones, like WeChat or Weibo. That has created additional barriers for those AI models to pick up on the data. And that's a fundamental flaw. Data is essential to train artificial intelligence. But not all countries are so ready to hand data over to Chinese companies. One recent example is TikTok, the popular social media platform with a billion global active users each month. Its parent company, ByteDance, was accused of storing US users' personal data in China and allowing Chinese authorities access to them. I feel that it's very difficult to separate the politics from a, a data governance or data privacy kind of conversation. And Chinese companies will always have that perception problem that you know the data they collect will be used for purposes other than purely commercial or maybe used for purposes that don't fit either the EU or the US frameworks, even if the truth is something else. In 2022, the US announced a ban on the sale of supercomputing chips and advanced chip-making equipment to China. AI-specific chips like the NVIDIA H800 and A800 were recently added to the ban list. These chips were specifically designed for the Chinese markets. 
the Biden administration also issued in order to restrict U.S. investments into China. Most of the concerns comes with the application of AI to, to military and defense. And that has always been a concern with, uh, with technology. And that will remain as long as these two powers are in some sort of rivalry. The China-U.S. relation is probably not going to improve significantly in the coming decade. So China now focus or stress very heavily on the self-reliance of high tech. In just the first half of 2023, China exported 114 gigawatt capacity of solar panels on the way to eclipsing 2022's record. But this dominance has got some countries worried. Since 2012, Europe and the US started to implement anti-dumping and anti-subsidy program against China. And as a result, there are more restrictive measures against the China's exports. China要加大对中国的光伏产品的进口的这个税收。这件事情呢，干了好多次了。这是因为美国为了保护他自己的光伏企业，因为美国的光伏企业的成本显著的高于中国的光伏企业的成本。the U.S.-China trade war intensified in August 2022, when President Biden banned the export of advanced chips to China. The EU also has plans to ban Chinese solar panels, claiming they were made with forced labor from Xinjiang. Then Beijing hit back. It announced that it is considering an export ban on key solar technologies. China controls 75% of the manufacturing process to assemble solar cells and modules, as well as 85% of solar cells production. Such a ban could ripple through the solar supply chain. When it comes to the competition between China and the US, the technological decoupling in the high-tech sector is quite real. There is a real competition for who's going to own or lead the transformative technology in the future. But in the beginning, clean energy was virtually unknown to the Chinese consumer. Demand had to come from elsewhere. It's mostly the European demand that had triggered China's investment in the whole renewable energy sector. China,中国当时主要的商业模式就是从国外买来原料啊，买来设备，利用国外的一些领先的技术，然后加工成现成的产品，再返销到国外。And because of the lower cost in China, with labor cost and OPEX cost, they could quickly become profitable and raise the funds for rapid factory expansions. They are the undisputed global champion today. When former US Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, visited Taiwan in August 2022, China cut off climate talks in protest. But in July 2023, US climate envoy John Kerry visited Beijing, a long-awaited trip to restart climate negotiations. Given that uh, climate change is uh, one of the very few sort of common goals right between China and the U.S., why not collaborate? At the APEC meeting in November 2023, Presidents Biden and Xi attempted to repair their fractured relationship. The two leaders agreed to renew the decades-old Science and Technology Agreement. This allows for cooperation in R&D between the two superpowers. Regardless of whether its motives are political, economic or environmental, China will continue to be the dominant force in renewables. But it will have to convince the world of its AI viability if it wants to be a global leader by 2030. AI will receive the most attention and some of the most important fundings from the state. And eventually the two countries will be quite similar in their computational model when it comes to the use of AI.